Hey guys, Mike Toy, Bonsai Boise. This is my corkscrew willow. I've had this for about five and a half or maybe six years. And it started from a cutting about this big, give or take. So that in five or six years with this thing. So it probably looks a lot different if you've seen any of my previous videos on it. It used to be much fuller. But I hacked it way back last year, so I'm going to give you a quick behind the scenes story as to why I did that, what I've done since, and then we're just going to give it a little trim and take a closer look at it. And I'll uh, tell you what I know about corkscrew willows from my experience. So let's go. Okay, so let me give you a little better look at it here. These corkscrew willows really are beautiful trees, I think. In early spring, when they leaf out, the leaves are almost a bright yellow, kind of, or um, turning kind of to a neon greenish. And you can see, see that it still has a, a very light green. It's like greenier than most greens, <laughs> if that makes sense. So they're, they're really pretty trees. Um, and they, the reason that they, I think, are called corkscrew, at least I would guess, is because as they grow out, they, they don't really do the weeping effect as much as, like, a lot of willows do. They do more of a corkscrew type thing where you can see these branches kind of start to spin around and kind of like a corkscrew effect a little bit. Right now it's bushy. I haven't done much to it. Um, we've got some die back here and looks like some right there in the middle of the branch and got some funky movement but um that's what i know about these they're very fast growers they love a lot of water and a lot of sunlight and i just now noticed something on the trunk just this very second while i was talking let me show you a little close up here if i can right there I don't like that as I'm sitting here talking about how much I love the bark. The bark is peeling off and right on the front too. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Never noticed that until just now. Eh, you know, it's to be expected. You can't fall too in love with the shape and structure of these willows just because dieback is a common occurrence i've been fortunate with this one as it hasn't experienced a ton of dieback um, but just a, a quick backstory on this uh, when i had this stored at my girlfriend's house in her yard for a few years and then she moved in with me in my apartment had to move everything to my patio which was a north facing patio i didn't want to move this to the patio because these need a lot of sun in my experience um, so a friend of mine let me store it in his yard and I just was nervous about the watering situation. He had sprinklers and everything, but still when you're not there to check it every day, things can go wrong. And I really love this tree. So my strategy was I hacked it way back and which is why it's hacked back to this kind of shape now. And I repotted it into some very organically rich soil to help hold more moisture. Um, hacking it way back puts less demand on the roots for water. Uh, so that was my theory there. And even doing that, it still experienced some dieback. So um, I'm glad that I did it. I had to sort of cut off the limb to save the body type of thing. But it was worth it. So that's the story of how we got where we are right now. Okay, I'm going to try and spin this just so you get a better look here. I think somewhere around February or March, I repotted it yet again into some more bonsai soil. And it's in a big pot, as you saw earlier, just because the sort of long-term goal with this is to keep it as a, just an outdoor patio type bonsai in a big pot and let it be big. 
Okay, so this angle here is what I'm considering to be the front. And you can see there's, you know, I haven't done any structural pruning for the most part. Um, ever since I got it back from my friend's yard, I just sort of have been letting it grow. I wanted it to regain a lot of health. And I, I think it has. So now that it has, I want to be a little bit strategic about that growth. Um, for example, we've got this one down here. I don't want branches this low in the trunk. Maybe this one here, but not too. We're going to get rid of these ones that are growing underneath branches and down here in the elbow of branches. And the biggest problem area is back here. Got these two very large branches, the two largest ones that want to take over as the leader. They're much, much, much higher than the rest of the branches, but they're coming from a low spot. So we're going to trim those down, maybe take them off entirely. And then just sort of do some branch selection and maybe nip the tops of some branches just to create more ramification. So I'll show you how I do that in it. By the way, these do propagate really easy. So I'm going to keep the cuttings and propagate more of these because they're just such cool trees. I really love them. So let's get to cutting. Okay. So I know I don't want this one. By the way, to propagate these, typically what you want to do is take off most of the leaves. Something along those lines and then propagate it in water, like so. But I'm not going to bother de-leafing them at the moment. I usually just throw them all in the bucket of water and then afterwards when I'm done, I kind of pick and choose. So next spot, I'm going to pick one of these to keep and one to lose. I'm going to keep the one on the right, lose the one on the left. So. Like another little one there too. Just clean that up a bit. You know? And I'll take it back to maybe about there. Just so it can ramify a little bit better. I may do some wiring today or may not. We'll see how this goes first. So these here, we'll lose those. Those are growing on the inside of a branch, which I'm not super religious about it. I know some people never ever want that. There are occasions when I think it's acceptable. Hmm, but this is not one of them. these little ones back here. I'm just going to do it the easy way and rip them out. Anything that's growing down in the little elbows here of branches. I don't want to get too crazy with the pruning just because it is still sort of recovering. I might get rid of this here. This big hunk of dead die back. I don't know how easy that's going to come off though. Try first pass at it. Ooh. Super dead. Uh, I'll get some larger loppers to take off the rest of that. But I'll do it after the fact. Oh, there we go. Some of these here, I'm just going to sort of take it back. I don't have to get too crazy with... Um, Picking which leaf set. I mean, these things are such prolific growers that whatever you take the time to select is just going to undermine you in two weeks and do something different. So here's one of the larger ones coming out of the back. It's actually not too bad. It's not in a bad spot. It's just a little too lengthy. So I'll take it back a little. I'm going to get rid of most of these two big thick ones that are trying to become leaders just to make sure that they don't it's going to go through and just kind of just take the tips off of some of these got a bunch growing in the 
inside elbow piece here of this branch. Yeah, it's kind of a funny position I'm in with this tree because it really I, I could get picky with it and I could do a bunch more branch selection and really kind of correct some things, but at the same time, I also want to let it grow out since it had such a rough year last year. But letting it grow out, it can get reverse taper, so kind of a catch-22 there. Let's take a step back and look at it bigger picture here. Okay, so looking at it kind of a taking a step back and getting a bigger picture of it, I'm thinking this is a little awkwardly too tall. Take it back just a little. May as well have some kind of logic and reasoning going here. Take a step back again, look at it. Give it a little spin. So about there is the front, somewhere in there. Give you one side view. These were the two wannabe leaders that were taken over and you could you can kind of see at least i can see it in my angle let me spin it here it was just starting to get some weird bulge right there some reverse taper so that's the kind of thing that i'm trying to avoid so i'm glad i addressed it when i did in fact i might take another one off entirely in fact i'm gonna but which one which one maybe both i do think i'm going to take both of them off i don't want that reverse taper at all there's a spider right there. I've been getting spider webs everywhere and I couldn't find the culprit, but I just did. There he is. Bet you didn't think you were going to see a nature show today. I have no idea where he went. Tricky little guy. Let me clean up these nubs here. Speaking of spiders, I don't know which kind are good and which kind are bad. I need to do some homework and figure out what are the good ones, what are the bad ones. Because there are good ones and bad ones. And I don't know which one is which. Let me spin it back around here. So the front is somewhere in there. Maybe even a little bit more. I kind of do want this one going out. I think I'll get some wire and just sort of guide this one out just a little bit. Okay, I went and got some wire. This is some copper coated wire. I got a giant spool. It was probably twice as big as this when I first got it. Um, if you've ever bought bonsai wire, you know, off Amazon or something like that, you'll know that something, a fraction of this, maybe a 20th of that is maybe 20 bucks. I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of a uh, guessing there a little bit but it's somewhere in that neighborhood i got this for maybe eight dollars at dnb supply it's just fencing wire is all it is but it's worked great i've been using it for two years and it's only halfway gone uh, let's see how do i want to do this one this is the one i want coming out this way maybe a few of them but for now we'll focus on this guy i think what we will do got that spider <laughs> that was gross. I'm sorry you had to see that. I'm not the best at wiring, and this is not the best wiring job. So, if you were about to critique and criticize, I'll save you the trouble. I already know. But it gets the job done. I used to be worse, believe it or not, because I would wire something and then sort of forget about it. Wires would cut in all the time. I'm better at remembering now. Sort of the trick with wiring, at least for me, 
because I don't try to wire it too tight on the main trunk or main branch because I don't want it cutting in and restricting it. <sighs> Take a step back and look at that. Yeah, that's good enough. That's what we we're going for. All right, so that's really it for today. I just wanted to clean this up a little bit, give you a quick look and an update at it, tell you how easy they are to propagate. If you see one at a park somewhere, just take a little snip of one, take it home, put it in a bottle of water. Pretty much guaranteed to grow roots. Let me give you a spin here. Hoping I don't break the legs off this thing by spinning it. It's not on a turntable, I'm just spinning it. That's it. Has a bright future ahead of it. Had a little bit of a rough year last year, but all is not lost. It survived. It's doing good. It's nice and healthy and it's growing. So what more can we ask for? Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. You can see updates on this again later and other trees that I have. You can go back and see some of where it came from when it was only a fraction of this size. And uh, I thank you for doing that and I thank everybody else who has. So. Thanks again. Have a good rest of your night.